and we've got 750,000 fruit trees being pulled out of the ground in the Goulburn Valley. Well, at week's end, let's go to Peter Kelly, the Managing Director of SPC Ardmona. Peter, good morning. Good morning, Alan. You have made an offer, have you not, following our discussion to the Australian Government to provide canned fruit and vegetable products as part of the Government's emergency aid to communities in the Philippines devastated by Typhoon Haiyan. And I understand you've contacted your local federal member, Dr. Sharman Stone, who I might add is an expert on all of this. But you've been in contact with all of them. That's right, uh, Alan. And? The executive team and I had a look at the, you know, you just got to watch the news and see little kids in the street there screaming out for, for uh, the basics of life, water and food. So we immediately contacted Sharman, who's been pushing for foreign aid to include physical food products for years now. Yes, she has. She's brilliant. We made an offer to supply as much as they would want at cost. Um, and if they opened that channel for a physical shipment, we'd also donate another quarter of a million dollars worth of product ourselves just because we want to help. Mm, and? We're waiting for a response. Uh, I know that uh, Sharma took that to Julie Bishop and she also briefed the Prime Minister on uh, on Wednesday. So. You're, you're simply talking about the common sense thing, food as foreign aid instead of cash. I mean, why shouldn't we use these high quality food products as part of the aid effort? Absolutely. It, you, you've said, I understand you've said, you could have this stuff ready for shipping within 48 hours if the government accepted your offer. Absolutely. Um, we, we've got a workforce that actually includes a lot of people from Filipino heritage, so very motivated workforce who are willing to work all weekend this weekend to do whatever it takes and we'll, we'll get it to the docks. It's just that, that step of how do you get it physically there and maybe the Navy or someone like that, the supply ships could take it. I don't know. The oh, God, this is not difficult. That is not difficult. That no. is not difficult. Let's just go back a bit to get just the latest in all of this. Now, the original calculation was 750,000 trees were surplus because of imports and therefore at the risk of being destroyed. Now, I understand that in the last 12 months, that's why it's a minute to midnight, 300,000 trees have gone. Yeah, that's right, Alan, exactly. Gone. Uh, that's right. Finished. Yeah. Off the asset register. So, How long does it take to grow these trees if you start it again? Well, some of the ones that have been uh, destroyed are actually 100 years old. Some of the, for example, peach trees actually just keep going. So they're 100-year-old uh, assets that... Uh, Unbelievable. Yeah. And but now, uh, now there are another 200,000, am I right, that could be destroyed before the year is out? That's right, Alan. 200,000 before the season actually begins. Um, and that could be saved by our own, our own government just buying our own products for hospitals, for example. For hospitals and the Defence Force and for foreign aid, could put a huge dent in that number and could save those last, uh, those last remaining 200,000 that are at risk. So because of the debates we've been having, the Australian consumers have come to the party and I understand you feel that they are buying now Australian goods, you say, uh, about, you know, that Woolworths have come to the party as well. So there's a, yep. a better response towards made in Australia. Absolutely. I think, you know, without, uh, and without being gushing with, uh, with admiration for, for you, Alan, but people like you raising this issue means that Consumers have had to think about it, and I, I got some numbers out yesterday because I knew I was coming on to have a chat with you, and Woolies Australian grown fruit, for example, is up 15% over the last couple of months compared to last year, so that's consumers voting with their feet and, um, you know, recognising the issue because it's been raised and voting with their feet. I just want to save these last 200,000 trees, and if our own government would do exactly the same thing with our own hospitals and our own army and defence force, uh, we could put a dent in this last amount, and we've just got to get the the government to do what the, the big retailers have decided to do um, to, try and, to try and save the industry. So that's one step, isn't it? Uh, government organisations, state government departments yes. as well. Yes. Health Hospitals, health. jails, eh? Yes, that's exactly right. Now, the issue is here, is it not, that Australian products are disadvantaged before they get to the starting line. It's not a level playing field, is it? Absolutely, Alan. You know, it, it is impossible for for, uh, for us to compete on on, uh, on a price per, per price basis because uh, different growing standards, different wages, different health regulations, different regard for the environment, uh, you know, for the type of chemicals that are being used, all that stuff. But you know, the amazing thing since I last spoke to you is the Anti Dumping Commission has found that, uh, for example, uh, fourteen Italian companies are dumping products yep. in Australia, and this is, it includes canned tomatoes and tin fruit. Absolutely, but fourteen, Alan, means you know. Phenomenal. That's, that's an organised effort. 14, 14 different companies all that's deciding it. to break the rules. So the flip side of that is to say we'll impose a tariff. That's the flip side. They have to. It's, they're, they're literally breaking the law now, so the, the trade law. So, you know, we tried to get the Productivity Commission to, to just see the damage and give us... All we asked for them was 200 days cover. 
It was 200 days yeah. before we could save these trees. And they couldn't even see that any damage was happening. And yet the anti-dumping guys say, my God, it's, it's material damage. And in fact, 14 companies in, from Italy are all breaking the actual law. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's, it's, Let um, me just ask you the, gu the guts question, right? Yeah. If someone were to walk in today, just suppose it was the government, but anyone could walk in today and say, to save these 200,000 trees, we've got to buy this fruit now, right? Yes. Yeah. How much would that fruit cost off 200,000 trees which would save them? How much would it cost? Oh, five million dollars. What? Yeah. Five million? At, at the cost of the fruit? Yeah. That, that's piddling stuff. It's, it's not very much. Five million dollars. And that would save 200,000 trees. Yep. Heavens above. And, and what's, what, what's, what's just unconscionable though is, you know, in that, we, we see a natural disaster in the Philippines where, where this type of food is the only type of food really that can get through. You know, tin food and things that can, can that can sustain themselves in that sort of environment, and uh, you know, people are starving. What if you know natural disasters? That's why we need industries like ours to survive. The, the manufactured food industry has to survive so that. So we need twenty five thousand people to put in twenty bucks. <laughs> what? Isn't that right? Have I got this wrong? We need twenty. Is that twenty five or two hundred fifty thousand? People things like our own hospitals. I've got to work this out. But I mean, hospitals and that is nothing. Five. So, in other words, if the foreign budget, Julie Bishop or Barnaby Joyce, took it out of the agriculture budget, five million, we buy the fruit, even if we're not sure what we're going to do with it. But you said you'll can it anyway, and it can go to the Philippines. Well, that, well that's, that's essentially what we've what we've offered to do with our yeah. foreign aid offer. We're saying, but I think it's good to put a figure on it. Cost. You reckon? You reckon we could tell Julie Bishop, Tony Abbott, and Co. Because I'll tell them today, five million. You'll can it, and it goes to the Philippines. Yep, yeah, that's the fruit cost. Yep. Yeah. Yep, we've got to can it, so we have to add the value of the, what it costs us to can things up and put all yes. that, you know, added labour and stuff. So the fruit costs five million all up, to get it all up tinned and blah, 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 ready to go what? The, the list of stuff that we've actually sent to Sharman to, to give to Julie is yeah. five million dollars worth of finished goods yeah. uh, for that foreign aid, so that'd be a first, that's the first hit. Um, I know the Australian government's offering ten million dollars of aid. I suspect that we'll be giving more aid in the future, you know, this problem won't go away in the Philippines yeah. very quickly. Uh, but you know... We just after a bit of a fair so five game. million saves two hundred thousand trees. That's the equation. That's that's the fruit cost. Yep, five, five, five million yeah. saves two hundred, and then there's processing costs and so yep, on on yep, top yep, of that. Yep. Hey, yep. Well, let's see where we go. Oh, you keep in touch with me. I'll keep in touch with you. Thanks, Alan. Five million. There's the start. How? What's the mood down there? Uh, it's actually pretty good. I mean, this anti-dumping decision really yeah. rallied the troops because this is the proof of what we've been saying. It's not fair. People aren't playing no. by the rules. No. You know, some foreign companies are gaming. Yeah, well, the next question is do something about it for God's sake, isn't yeah. it? That's, That's the next question. To do, yeah. Good so on you, Peter. We're a big decision on peaches, dumping of peaches uh, in December. So that will well, get that stuff to me. Great. Right, champ. Okay, Thanks there he is. From SPC Admona, we'll, I'll talk to Tony Abbott about that today. It's 29 and a half after 7. Russia.